Sega. Welcome to the latest Total War Attila feature spotlight video. This time we'll be taking a closer look at migrating barbarian hordes. Begin a new campaign as one of the great migrator factions and you'll assume command of its hordes, which offer a completely new way to play Total War. Their nomadic, tent-based lifestyle means they effectively carry their towns with them and don't need to own brick and mortar settlements in order to build and improve structures develop their economic and farming potential, and recruit new forces. You'll generally find yourself migrating away from the increasingly infertile and hostile north in search of safer, more productive lands. Playing as the Visigoths, for example, you start with two hordes in the middle of the Eastern Roman territory, and you're advised to head southwest and make inroads into the crumbling Western Roman Empire. Ultimately, you'll have a target location to reach, guided by your factional objectives, which places you on historical paths that the tribes took. However, you can go about reaching this destination in any way you see fit, and if that means plundering and raising your way across the map, so be it. You now have the army view and building view icons side by side, as a horde effectively represents a combination of both. To build or upgrade buildings, you need to enter the encampment stance, which converts your horde into an immobile camp. You can do this anywhere on the map at any time, provided the horde has 25% of its action points left that turn. While in the encampment stance, your horde gets a number of important bonuses. A big buff to the horde's growth rating makes it easier to expand your population and improve your infrastructure and the Horde also gets a boost to its army integrity. So if your Horde is fighting its way around the map for extended periods and you notice its integrity is dropping, it's wise to make camp and give the troops a break. Encampment also provides shelter, making the Horde immune to all types of attrition and boosts its income as the populace turns its attention to commerce and industry. New agents can be recruited while encamped and new hordes formed with a member of your family or one of your associated nobles as its general. These orders may still be issued to mobile hordes. Building is somewhat different for hordes than it is for standard settlements, as there are 10 building slots available to a horde, considerably more than even a large city can hold. They can all be filled and upgraded with buildings and locked in the migrator-specific tech trees. Another new feature in Attila is the building browser, located here. This enables you to see all of the buildings available to you and which technologies are required to unlock them. You'll notice that each building chain is color-coded and the horde-specific buildings available are usually at the bottom of the filters with the word migrating before them. You can always tell which building is horde-specific by the wheel symbol in the top left of the building icon. When the time comes, you may wish to settle down and become a more traditional settlement and city-focused faction. When one of your hordes conquers a settlement, you'll be given the option to occupy. If you choose to do so, this will end your faction's migration. At this point, all of your hordes will discard their horde infrastructures and become standard armies. This isn't a decision to be taken lightly, however, as the great majority of your campaign resources up to this point, such as income and food, are provided by your horde infrastructures. Settling is something you'll need to coordinate and plan for, so the bigger and more numerous your hordes, the more settlements you'll need to colonize in as short a time as possible in order to maintain your military and economic strength with the infrastructure of settlements. In fact, the only playable horde faction that never has the option to settle is the Huns, just not in their nature. Settled migrator factions can always choose to hit the road again. In the faction menu under the summary panel, you can see whether your faction is migrating or not and where your capital city is located. By clicking Start Migration, you're one turn away from abandoning all your settlements and turning your armies back into hordes. They'll have to build their infrastructures back up from scratch though, so make sure you've got plenty of coin in the coffer. The income you'll generate from abandoning settlements will certainly help you get started again. Raising enemy settlements is profitable and useful, not to mention fun. 
as it brings you a stack of income and smashes a valuable cog in your enemy's infrastructure. But it also devastates the fertility of the land in that region, which has negative connotations for any hordes encamped there, as hordes rely on region fertility for food production, population growth, and troop replenishment. To check the fertility of a region, go to the overview map and click on the fertility filter at the top. This is also a useful guide to direct you towards more fertile lands. Roaming the map, raising and looting as you please, is loads of fun and immensely satisfying, but it also brings a host of new challenges. With threats coming at you from every direction and no walls to provide cover, each and every decision you make will be crucial to your survival. Will you struggle living hand to mouth or will you master the lifestyle of the nomadic warrior to become a tribe of legendary renown? That's it for this feature spotlight. The Horde awaits you.